got glasses just in case I need them, but hopefully we'll do fine without them. <laughs> Good morning, UCC Simi Valley. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you, and I'm so honored by Reverend Jim's invitation. Um, I met Reverend Jim in 2014 when he preached at First Congregational Long Beach uh, for the installation of our then senior minister, the Reverend Elena Larson. Um, and uh, I was serving, and still am serving, as poet in residence at First Congregational Long Beach. Uh, Jim immediately began encouraging me and supporting my poetry, so I'm particularly grateful for the opportunity to offer here some poems from my four book series of spiritual poetry inspired by my experience reading Rumi and Hafiz. I'd also like to share with you a bit about my journey as a poet and how it has dovetailed with the journey of healing I've experienced through being part of a UCC community. I started writing poetry as a child and began studying creative writing formally in college after earning an MFA in creative writing from the University of Michigan and another in playwriting and screenwriting from USC, I worked as an adjunct professor teaching creative writing and screenwriting at Cal State Long Beach. When I first came to First Congregational Long Beach in 1998, I was just personally beginning to recover from being a blocked writer, from having an overactive inner critic. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that. Um, <laughs> Uh, a musician friend invited me to join the choir, and then he and I collaborated on a choral piece for Christmas that year. A few years later, uh, after I'd injured my back and couldn't continue teaching at Cal State Long Beach, I no longer had an income, so I decided to donate poetry to the church as a way of tithing. Having a place to contribute and share my poetry brought healing to my creative process. In 2007, I was invited to join the worship and arts ministry team at First Congregational Long Beach to help bring multi-sensory experiences into worship. Also that year, a church friend invited me to collaborate on an artist book to donate for a fundraising auction. A second friend loaned me a book of Rumi poems, which showed me new ways of writing poetry, and a third friend loaned me a book of poetry by Hafiz. How these two Sufi poets, Rumi and Hafiz, became my teachers and guides is described in my poem that I will now read, At Last I Have Found Friends. As a poet who doesn't want to nail words to the page, but get them up and dancing, words that get drunk with abandon and go carousing till dawn, words that refuse to toe the line, and laugh at bandied terms like responsibility. Words that love to sing, and more than anything, love to kiss. Words that sneak up on you and plant a big wet smackaroo on your lips. Unruly, wayward words that praise ecstasy, not dogma. How does a poet with a gang of words like that find friends? not among the pursed lips and puckered brows of ivory towers or bastion journals. Such a poet gets more respect from courtesans and thieves. So at last, I have found friends. Hafiz and Rumi are like two rascally elder brothers who would take their gypsy sister out to the wildest tavern where golden wine will spill all over the floor. In no time, she'll be up on the table dancing because her brothers have taught her well. Desire is only a precursor to thirst, for when thirst burns and aches with a stitch in the side from dancing and dancing, then the vintner himself will come out aproned and pour the next round. Through these processes of friendship and co collaboration at First Church Long Beach, the poetry I write became a vessel of service and sharing. By putting down strong roots in a supportive community, I was able to expand and grow new branches. When I started writing the short poems that form my book, Swimming in God, I was grieving the tragic death of a childhood friend. For the artist book project, I started writing short poems in groups of 30, 
meditating on a particular theme. It was the season of Lent, so I took on writing the poems as a daily practice. As I gradually learned to show up and get out of the way, the poems started flowing. It seems I was writing my way through the grieving process. And this group of poems is from 30 Poems of Longing. Number two. God, you have taken everything from me. My skin, my bones, my hair, my love. God, I am nothing but your breath, which lifts me like a kite. God, in deepest night, your music stirs me to know you, throat open, singing. Number six. The ineffable, that is what I thirst for. Somehow it is present and not present. In the dawn, with its liquid amber light, in the fresh peach juice of your kisses. Life surrounds me, and it is so full. My very being aches with joy and sings. Number 11. Grief kept me frozen, still. But the Lord of the dance warms me now, demands motion. Can I jump for joy? Even the rose bushes amputated of all life, send out new red stems and lift yellow heads, mirroring the sun. Number 10. Beloved, shadows of palm fronds play across the patio. Shadow and light seem so distinct in their dance along river stones. If you are light, and I am shadow. Does not shadow exist because of light? Number 15. The mystics who dance know that laughter is the key. The wind doesn't really blow the sail. It sucks the boat forward. Desire is everything. That difference of air pressure lifts the bird's wing. Number 17, today's path leads past the koi pond, the sun and I midway in our journeys. Squiggles of red, orange, white, gold, like paint on canvas come to life, raucously make living art. Is this what our creator sees? Are we brush and pigment? Number 18, a fire dances in the copper brazier and embers float upward in the night sky. Their passion makes them lighter than air. They do not think how to reach God, but only burn as brightly as they can this night. While I was grieving, it seemed that pain and sadness completely absorbed my attention. Gradually, I also began to experience moments of joy. Over time, I came to feel as if there were parallel channels out there, something like different radio frequencies. I found I could choose to tune my awareness to the channel of joy. And the next group is from 30 Poems of Joy. Number 15. <clears throat> <clears throat> Number 15. When the inner sergeant rants that all must be ordered, structured, rigid, on time, tell him we are off the clock. We've gone out dancing because the planets can only spin if we dance them into motion with our whirling frolic and joy. This next poem I would like to dedicate to the memory of my mother, Doris Datsko. As a teenager, she studied to be a concert pianist. Even when she was married and had five kids, she kept up her piano until the frustration of having arthritis in her hands caused her to give it up. When she was 82, she had a major stroke. 
With medication and rehab, she was able to walk and speak again. She needed more help from my father. But one change I noticed was that her inner critic had disappeared. When a piano professor brought her students to perform at the retire com retirement community, my mother asked to study with her. The professor said yes, and my mother lived four more years with the joy of making music as part of her life. Number 22. My mother crosses the plaza of the World War II monument, her peach raincoat streaming behind her in the breeze, the stroke that blurred planning and executing only deepens focus on her joy in the moment. And so we will all be marching forward on strong legs of spirit, our doubts flapping behind till they finally let go. After I wrote the 90 poems for Swimming in God, the poetry kept flowing as meditations on themes such as courage, compassion, and gratitude. The next two poems are from 30 Poems of Courage. Number three. Courage is not certainty. It is trust. The acorn falling to loamy ground has no certainty of what comes next, nor does it stare up the grand trunks surrounding it with any envy or awe. It trusts the truth of splitting open, reaching deep, and drinking in light. Number 18. Poetry is courage for the poet. Dance is courage for the dancer. Song is courage for the singer. Truth is courage for the sage. Passion is courage for the lover. Love is courage for God. And the next two are from 30 Poems of Compassion. Number seven. Most of what passes for living is not living. Most of the time, our souls are not at home. They're out shopping for the future or hoarding the past like a miser's gold. Toss the past and let the future wait. Today, open the soul's house and fill it with flowers. Number 23. <clears throat> when a poem knocks at the door, answer it. When a song springs to your lips, sing it. When joy opens bright wings in your heart, soar. When laughter chases away critical thoughts, guffaw. When the friend turns you upside down and shakes you, let go all the junk your pockets have collected. And the next two are from 30 Poems of Gratitude. Number three. Breath rushes into the body like a thousand joyous children to their playground. Each cell jumps up and down with glee. Each electron pirouettes in ecstasy. Can there be any sane response to this raucous combustion called life other than gratitude? Number nine, my husband turns the pineapples upside down and stands them on their sturdy leaves to let their sweetness follow gravity and fill them completely. Could it be that God turns us upside down and stands us on our stubborn thoughts to let our sweetness follow gravity and fill us completely? Over time, this creative process of healing and writing moved me into an awareness of love. And the next three poems are from 30 Poems of Love. Number four. It takes a dancer, not that the steps are complex, though a good sense of balance helps. It takes a dancer to spin with this planet while fixing one's gaze in just one spot. 
It takes a dancer to move with intention, sensing the reality that we are swimming in God. Number nine. Come swim with me in God. My poem is water. Your song is water flowing raucously to the sea. Come swim with me in God. Where else to be one than in God's oneness, leaping like dolphins in the deep laughing ocean? Number 27. The gift of love is like tipping one heart to ignite it from the flame of the one next door. I burn my candle late into the night and dip my pen in it to write with golden passion. This poem has your name on it. There is one for each of your neighbors. Strike it against your heart and its burning will light your way. In 2012, I was honored with the title of poet in residence at First Congregational Long Beach. Much of what I write flows through me because I am rooted in the church and the wider community. I also want to lift up the value of a supportive community as a place where artists can collaborate and thrive. For all of this, my heart overflows with deep gratitude to the UCC for its practice of radical welcome. And the final group of poems are from 30 Poems of Peace. Number five. Dear ones, let go all your striving. Let go all desire to be something grand, to build of your life a pyramid or palace. Rather, carve into your soul a hollow place and sand it smooth to create a bowl. Dance in the rain to catch God in your bowl and offer a drink to all. Number 19. Life's precious dance is dancing in me. Energy swirls through me like bursts of lightning. Breath flies in and out like the monarchs migrating. Cells dance in their salt tides like anemones feeding. Bones meditate with great stillness in their marrow. The beloved is the dancer, now becoming the dance. Number 20. Peace is found in the stillness. Look for it there by quieting the mind. Let the traffic of your atoms slow. Let the fist around your heart relax its grip. So your heart floats upward like a balloon yearning, disappearing, finally bursting to join God. Number 25, lean in closely and I will whisper to you, there is a secret language to communicate with love. Poetry is the language of intimacy with God. Come nearer yet. It is not I who call, but the beloved. Lift your pen, brush, guitar, soul, for to create is to let God dance within you. Number 28. The beloved is the ground of all being, and yet the beloved's being takes root in each creature and plant. We are all rooted in each other. Our leaves and branches, arms and hands form one great creation. Peace flows from trust and trust from knowledge. Our oneness is certain, unbroken, unbreakable. The last poem I would like to offer today is number 30. Remember, dear ones, Peace is a choice, even amidst crashing waves of grief, pain, despair, stands a lighthouse with a glowing beacon, warm as sunlight 
pouring out love, swim for it, even amid the cacophony of worry, frustration, anger, a clear, true note shimmers. Tune your ears to peace. Thank you, UCC Simi Valley, for your radical welcome this morning. Amen.